Hello and welcome back. In the last few sessions, we uh, had a sneak preview of Bitcoin transactions. We learned about some terms, though we did not deep dive into the uh, meaning and the use of those terms, which we, which we are going to do in subsequent sessions. We also learned about some of the trivia around Bitcoin. In this session, we are going to have a sneak preview of the working of a blockchain using a toy demo. This toy demo has been uh, developed by Professor Anders Brownworth, and I am uh, grateful to him uh, because he has made this uh, demo public along with the source code. So anybody can use it actually. And we will use this demo to understand some of the basic functions. So you can come, uh, uh, you can go to this website, andersbrownworth.com. And here you will see there's a visual demo of the blockchain technology. Let's go over here. We'll understand it in the form of a toy. Again, we may not uh, understand all the aspects or all the complexities, uh, which we are going to discuss in subsequent session, but it will give you an idea about how a blockchain internally works. We'll go to each of these functionalities one by one. So the first functionality called hash. If you remember when we did a sneak preview of the Bitcoin, we saw that every transaction has a hash and every uh, block also has a hash. What is the use of hash? Uh, again, we'll learn about this in detail in the science of blockchain, but here, uh, we'll just know what, what a hash means. A hash is a one-way encrypted data. Means that if there's a data over here, this data can be hashed in such a way that if somebody has the hash and not the data, it is almost impossible for, uh, for, for the person who has the hash to derive the data from the hash. Hash has various properties. For example, two uh, data cannot have the same hash. To be more accurate, the probability of having the same hash is very low for two data. One data cannot have two different hashes. It is a, a, a unique hash for every data. So similarly, there are some unique characteristics for hash, which again, we'll discuss in greater detail in the science of blockchain module. And we will also know that how these properties can be actually used for, um, uh, for, for, for uh, using in blockchain and to ensure certain characteristics that we said are very important for a blockchain. Here, for example, if I just write any data, the Quick bound fox, dumb to the lazy dog. So you see that the hash has changed. Okay. Uh, if I if I change this data even by a small amount, let's say I just put a full stop over here, the hash will completely change. So it is difficult uh, to figure out from these two hashes, this hash and this hash, that these two actually are derived from two sets of data which are largely similar. The only difference being a dot at the end of the line. Also, whenever we change, uh, 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 we, 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 uh, um, uh, we use the same data again and again, it will always give me the same hash. So if I write it again, Every time I write this data, it will give the same hash for the same hashing algorithm. 
So there are various popular hashing algorithm. The most popular one is SHA-256, which is used in Bitcoin. So as long as you're using the same hashing algorithm, every time you put input the same data, it will output the same hash. And it's almost impossible to decipher the original data uh, uh, if you have uh, if you have knowledge about the hash. So its hash is called a one-way encryption. Encryption. It is, it is not. It cannot be decrypted very easily. It is possible theoretically, but it's extremely difficult to decrypt the original data from the hash. Uh, now you may say that what does this data contain? In case of a blockchain, in case of a Bitcoin, obviously it is not a quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. It might it might be some transaction data, it might be some data about assets, etc. So what does this data contain? And is the data always in this format or there's a tabular format? How, how is the data formatted? So this is these are some things again we are going to discuss as we go along that what, what is the data that is actually going to be hashed. But the, the, the whole idea of showing you this toy example is to show how a hash works. Now we will go to the next module, which is the block. If you look at it, uh, uh, look at the whole concept of block, um, you will see that uh, every block also has a data. So let's put the same data. Jumped over the lazy dog. Now you would have seen that this has become red. That means this uh, something is wrong with this block. We'll come to what is wrong with this block later on. But you would notice that this block has this data. There's a block number. If you remember the uh, sneak preview of the Bitcoin, there was something called block height, a unique number. So this is this number, the block number. Okay, so here it is in the toy example represented as one. There is a value called nonce. If you recall that you have heard about this value nonce in the uh, sneak preview of Bitcoin, you, see, you have seen a value called nonce, though we did not explain or did not understand the meaning of this nonce. And there is data and now there's a hash. Now, why is this red? This red is, uh, this block has become red because there's a rule uh, that in this particular case, the builder of this toy example has, uh, Anders Brownworth has put in, which probably says that this hash has to contain, let's say a certain number of leading zeros or certain, it has to meet certain constraint in order to become a valid block, uh, uh, in order to become a valid hash. So any hash won't do. The hash has to contain certain number of leading zeros or any similar kind of constraint defined by the builder of this, uh, the, the algorithm of the blockchain. Now you may ask that why would you like to have this constraint? Why can't any hash work? There are reasons why the hash needs to have a constraint. We'll talk about that. The second question that you may ask that in the previous example, we just saw that every data has only one unique hash. It, however, in whatever way you write the data, as long as the data is the same, the hash is the same. So if that is the case, how can you build a constraint on the hash? How can you, for example, say the hash will have three leading zeros or four leading zeros? Because it is a fixed hash. It cannot change. This is the purpose of something called nonce. While the data cannot change, the nonce can. And the combination of the nonce and the data has to give a hash which has that, which satisfies the constraint of the number of leading zeros. That means we have to find out a nonce such that the nonce along with the data gives that uh, hash which satisfies the condition. This process of finding the nonce is called mining. So if you mine this block now, see what happens. 
the algorithm has found a new nonce and this nonce added with this data has found a hash which has four leading zeros. In the algorithm which Anders Brown was written, it's specified that the hash has to contain four leading zeros that the constraint that has been uh, built on uh, the, the uh, hash uh, to become a valid hash and the mining process finds out a nonce which added with the data gives you the hash with just four leading uh, zeros. And the interesting thing is that this nonce has to be found by brute force method. What do I mean by brute force method? You have to you have to try one nonce after another. There's no formula. You have to try one nonce after another till you find a nonce which uh, which will which when added to the data will give a hash which has four leading zeros. So there is no shortcut. There is no formula by which you can arrive at the nonce, and that is the reason why it took some time for the computer. If you have noticed that there was a uh, symbol of waiting time, so it took some time for the computer to find out that nonce. Obviously, you can understand that if you, you increase the number of zeros from four to let's say eight, it is it will be more difficult to find the nonce. More number of zeros, uh, leading zeros, more difficult it will be to find the, the right nonce that will have to, uh, uh, the requisite number of leading zeros. It is like saying it is more difficult to uh, hit upon an, uh, an instance where you have, let's say, two dices and both these dices will have six uh, compared to one dice having a six. The probability of, of one dice rolling a six is one by six, but both the dice rolling a six is one by 36. So it is more difficult to get two sixes by rolling simultaneously by rolling two dices compared to getting one six by rolling one dice. So you have noticed in the in the uh, sneak preview of the Bitcoin transaction, there's something called a difficulty level. So this difficulty level essentially signifies uh, in some denomination, the number of leading zeros that are required. And more number of leading zeros, more difficult it is, which means that the computer has to work harder to find out the right nonce that will give you the requisite hash. You may ask the question, why all of this? And why make it so complicated? Why do I need to have a nonce? Why do I need to have a certain number of leading zeros? Why do I have to make this whole process so difficult? There are reasons for this, and we'll talk about these reasons when we uh, study the science of blockchain in detail. In the next session, we are going to continue with this toy example, and we're going to see how a blockchain is built from these blocks.